this morning, if you will, page 323, standing on the promises of Christ my King. Let's sing first, second, and third verses together. Standing on the promises of Christ my King. Up there, I want you to look at the words with me. 
And uh, it says, standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, many times we are uh, pressed or convinced to stand on other Situa uh, other uh, areas of perhaps finances or confidence in government leaders or whatever that may be. And I think you understand. But we're going to find victory. We're going to find hope when we stand or we put our confidence in the Word of God and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. Look at the words that says, Bound to Him eternally by love, strong cord. Well, we're celebrating Valentine's Day tomorrow. <laughs> I'm thankful for the love of God. Amen. We're going to be talking about that this morning. Then, overcoming daily by the Spirit's sword. There's so many people today in America and across the world, really, that are defeated. Uh, we, we live in a defeated, discouraged society uh, that says there's no hope. There's no, there's no way out. But I'm thankful I can overcome. We're going to look at that. Actually, Brother Holly has no idea what we're preaching this morning, but that's just, just simply the Lord, Him picking out that song. Overcoming daily. I'm thankful we are conquerors through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? And when you think about the words, it'll be more meaningful to you. We're singing. we got substance to sing about today. Amen? Give it all you've got. Sing that last verse with all your heart once again today. Standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, bound to Him eternally by love's strong cord, overcoming daily by the Spirit's Lord, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God my Savior, standing. After that, you can be seated. I want to welcome you this morning to Temple Baptist Church. We believe it's the greatest church in the world. And we're so grateful for you being here on this rainy, chilly morning. Raise your hand if you got out and about outside and did some outdoor activities yesterday. Wasn't that a blessing? And uh, the, a lot of the teenagers, not everyone was able to go, but a lot of our teenagers and junior and even the toddlers were able to go snow tubing yesterday. And, um, and so it was a, a wonderful day. We had a wonderful, safe trip, so we thank the Lord for that. And, but I can't believe the temperature swings. Are, uh, I guess just this North Carolina. And so I'm still not going to switch it to New York or California or Florida. You know, if you're from those areas, you know, that's wonderful. We love those states. They're a part of our country. But, you know, I, I think we're just living in the best place of the country. I just really believe that. And uh, so I guess we'll just have to take that. But I didn't realize it was supposed to rain this morning. So God bless you. Thank you so much for coming out in the little chilly weather and the cold. Thank you for being here. You are an encouragement to your pastor this morning just simply with your faithfulness today and your spirit. And I appreciate you being faithful. We're looking forward to a wonderful day today in the house of God. I'm excited about this morning. And then also tonight we have a lot of things going on. And, uh, and I'm excited about uh, exalting the Lord this morning through the singing, through the preaching. And uh, as we go to the Lord in prayer, I want to uh, encourage you to uh, pray for a couple people. We have a couple that are in the hospital this morning. Uh, do pray for Miss Gladys Belcher. I just found out just a while ago before the adult Bible class hour that she is in the hospital. And Marvin, she's at Forsyth, I'm assuming. And so pray for her with pneumonia. She's not doing well. So pray for her. Miss Beverly Smith is also in the hospital. I did not know that. She's been in the hospital for a week. And I did not know that till after the service on Wednesday night. And so we have uh, talked to Mike yesterday. And uh, my wife has been in touch with uh, Mike as well and also texted Miss Beverly. And so uh, she's, she's just, Miss Beverly is just, the, the chemotherapy has just zapped her and her blood. Uh, all the different uh, numbers of all the different uh, plate levels and all the different aspects of her blood system are just all out of whack. And so we really want to pray for Miss Beverly this morning. She needs your prayer. And then uh, Tootie will be having an important test tomorrow, so remember that. Miss Wanda Michaels is not doing well. Melvin's here this morning, but uh, Wanda is not doing well. So you pray for her, especially uh, just really, really weak. So you remember these, Miss Gladys, Wanda Michaels, Tootie, Miss Beverly Smith, uh, specifically this morning. And then, of course, the bulletin on the back is just packed full of our prayer list. I encourage you to grab one of those and, and read it this week and pray for those 
uh, in our church that has needs, all right? And then let's pray for our junior church and our children's church, our nursery staff over there. And uh, I want you to be patient with us. We're, uh, the, someone said a growing church is always in transition. And so I thank the Lord that we have that problem, amen? And so we're having to split the nursery. There's so many of the infant, toddler uh, age uh, young people that are uh, being part of our services and we're grateful for that because we're having to split that and that means rearranging other classes and so uh, just work with us be patient with us and we're trying to get on the ball with that and so we're going to be introducing a brand new ministry called the wiggle worms okay uh, two three and four year olds and um, one of my children will be a part of that we're excited about that and I told my wife uh, I think it might have been yesterday or day before I said, we were looking at, we were purchasing, we got the, all these brand new toys and stuff for the nursery, these, uh, and the wiggle worms and all these, we're purchasing a good amount of brand new th things that they would love, and uh, I was talking to my wife, and I said, sweet, I, I remember, you, we used to do this for our own kids, and I said, sweetie, we're out of the baby stage now, and uh, Ellie, our youngest, she is a, she's, she'll be four this August, and I, and it's just heartbreaking to me, I thought, and and I know what you're thinking. Well, Pastor, you're not too old, but I know what I'm thinking, and I'm thinking it's over, okay? And uh, But anyway, we love our children, but we are at max capacity. I promise you that, unless the Lord intervenes. And, and uh, I trust the Lord knows best, all right? And, uh, but anyway, uh, let's get back to a special level today. But if you have a burden or a prayer request or a need in your life, would you raise your hand? And, you know, we all have needs in our life. So let's go to the Lord in prayer together and ask God for his blessings this morning. Father, Father, we love you. Thank you so much for allowing us to be back in church today. Thank you for a great crowd on this chilly, rainy morning. I am so encouraged by first-time visitors all throughout the auditorium, returning families, being back with us. And Father, just a great crowd of our people being faithful, and I'm encouraged not only by their faithfulness, but their spirit. Thank you for being so good to us. And Father, we simply give you all the honor, praise, and glory, and credit, and thanksgiving for what you've done and what you're doing in this place and Father, we ask you to continue to bless, help the needs of our church family physically and emotionally and mentally, spiritually. We have still many that are not able to be with us because of physical precautions and so forth. And those who are watching online, we ask, encourage, we ask that you'd encourage them and bless them today. And Father, we ask that you be uplifted and magnified today through the singing, the preaching. And we'll be careful to give you all the glory and the praise and thanksgiving for all that you do. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, you can be seated. Then I want to mention to you really quickly as you're being seated that if you have not received a visitor packet, we're going to try to get that to you as soon as possible here during the handshaking time. And uh, But if you have received a visitor packet, I want to encourage you to look down inside there. You should find a visitor card and also a pen provided there. And if you'd be so kind to fill that out for us and place that in the offering plate when it comes by in just a few moments, we'd love to have record of you being here with us this morning. Then I want to encourage you to be back with us tonight at 6 o'clock. I love our Sunday evening services. We have tremendous crowds. Uh, and and, and uh, I don't know, close, maybe 85 to 100 roughly around that frame. And uh, we just have great spirit, great crowds. And uh, I want to encourage you to be back with us. We have a nursery meeting and nursery ministry meeting tonight after the evening service. So if you are in the nursery, if you're involved in the nursery ministry, we need to meet with you right over here just real quickly after the evening service tonight. So keep that in mind. And then also we have families joining the church tonight, so you don't want to miss that. And you see, Pastor, who is it? Well, you have to come and see, okay? And then also midweek service, don't forget about that. Midweek, this Wednesday, 7 o'clock, we're continuing our Bible study on the life of Elisha teen program, uh, uh, junior and toddler kids for truth program. Keep all that in mind. Outreach program, 5 o'clock Wednesday. Keep all that in mind, if you will. Then we have a lot of other things coming up, such as our couples refresher, our men's skeet shoot. We have a lot. The Ladies Missionary Prayer Fellowship bake sale today. And we'll get a lot of those at the close of service. So keep all that in mind. Choir is going to sing for us at this time. I know God will use them to be a blessing. You listen as they sing.
again this morning. You did a wonderful job. Let's all stand together. Everyone standing all over the building, smiling, singing out unto the Lord with all your heart this morning. Amen. Holy, holy, holy. We don't sing this very often. This is a great, great church song. We are here to worship the Lord today. Amen. It's about Him, not us. Let's sing out this morning together, if you will. Sing third and fourth verses together this morning. Lift your voices. Sing with us if you will.
ushers, you come, if you will, at this time. We're going to receive our offering this morning. I want to thank you so much for last week's offering. Uh, the uh, these depositors and the treasurers of our church let me know that the building fund Sunday offering was uh, that was deposited was a little over four thousand dollars and and so I mentioned that on Wednesday night but again just for t- this morning if you didn't get to hear that and so I thank the Lord for that church where uh, if you're brand new to our church it's our family life center or gym and we're using this as an auditorium for the next five to seven years as we plan pray and save. For a new building, and Lord willing, this will come back into our gymnasium, uh, Lord willing, in, in several years, and uh, we'll build another building for an auditorium specifically. And so we're trying. I don't like debt. I don't know about you, but I want to uh, save as much as we can, and uh, for that in the future of our church. And so I'm excited. Thank you for being a part of that. And let's be faithful. Uh, we'll have those once a month, but let's be faithful today in our tithe and offering. Faith Promise Missions. You can label that, of course, on the envelope. Uh, whatever you like to do. If you didn't get your building fund in last week for building fund Sunday and you would like to do that today, you're welcome to do that as well, all right? And then I just real quickly before we pray, uh, if you're here for the very first time and just have received a visitor packet, uh, if, if you'll fill that visitor card out, place that in the offering plate, we'd love to have record of you being with us. So if you'd be so kind to do that, we'd appreciate that very much. Or you could give it to uh, my self or one of the ushers at the close of service today, okay? Let's go to Lord in prayer and ask God for his blessings. And I'm going to ask Micah Holly if you'll lead us to Lord in prayer over the offering today. Amen. You can be seated. Kids Choir is going to sing for us. I know they will be a blessing as they sing this wonderful song this morning. One more hand as they leave today. Appreciate that very, very much. All right. Take your Bibles, if you will, this morning, if you have them, to Romans chapter number 8. Romans chapter number 8, again, in your Bibles this morning. Look there with me in Romans chapter 8 and verse 35. Romans 8, 35. And again, thank you so much for being here this morning. And um, so we also, uh, uh, Justin, so... Uh, Jennifer's not with you this morning, but I, I, I would love to, if she was here, to be able to recognize you both. But I just, I want to recognize you. Justin uh, and uh, Jennifer got engaged. Uh, we won't make you, we won't make you stand, but we want you to come up here and sing. No, I'm just kidding. And um, so Justin got engaged and Jennifer got engaged last night. Let's give them a hand, shall we? And uh, I remember doing that. Many years ago. No, that wasn't that too long ago. But uh, we'll celebrate 12 years this year. It seems, like, it seems like yesterday. It really does. And so I'm grateful for the wife that God has given me. And a man finds the wife findeth a good thing, the Bible says in Proverbs. And uh, so I'm grateful for that. We have a lot of single guys. And ladies, if you're listening online today by any chance, and uh, 
you know, I don't know what it is. Most churches, most churches have an issue. That they don't have an issue, but they just have a lot of, you know, single young ladies between the ages of 18 and, you know, 35 or whatever it may be. Just tons of single ladies. we got all these single guys. My wife has often said, we don't have a lot of single ladies. We have a lot of single guys. My wife has told me uh, and told a lot of single guys uh, before she said, she said, when the, all these single girls find out that all these available guys are here, they'll come one day. But uh, <laughs> Romans chapter 8, let's begin reading in verse number 35. We're going to skip around just a little bit this morning for us, our series. We've been in our series on the uh, series of faith in Hebrews chapter number 11. And uh, we've been in that for several weeks. We'll continue that, Lord willing, next week. And so, uh, and then also, uh, if you haven't been a part of that, I want to encourage you to come and uh, be with us next week as we continue that series, uh, again, on, on the Hall of Faith or the By Faith series. But uh, because of Valentine's Day being tomorrow, we want to look at Romans chapter 8 and verse number 35. Just as kind of a, uh, if you haven't got our calendar, church event calendar, I want to encourage you to get one uh, before you leave today. And uh, in the entryway on the table there, and it has a lot of upcoming events. We go by that. And uh, one thing that's coming up, not next week, week after next, on the 27th, we'll have Andrew and Mary Beth Jones with us all day, Sunday morning, Sunday night, for all of our singing. You do not want to miss that, okay? And so uh, be, make, I know that you're always normally here, but you, you will be blessed by their singing ministry. <clears throat> They do that. Uh, they travel and 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 sing constantly, full time type thing, and so you want to be a be a part of that. Okay, Romans chapter eight, verse thirty five. If you found your place, say Amen. amen. Verse thirty five. The Bible says, "Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for Thy sake we are killed all the day long." We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And this morning, I want to talk to you about the subject of God's love confirms and uh, tonight will kind of, it won't be the same message, but tonight will be a, a continuation of this God's love. And we'll reveal that this evening at 6 o'clock. But God's love confirms. And, uh, you know, many times when I make a transaction with my debit card uh, through Amazon or, or Walmart or wherever that may be, when I make a transaction, they always give me a confirmation number. And usually it's a long digit number, you know, maybe eight digits or whatever it may be. And what that is, is that's confirming, that's giving me confirmation of what the transaction has taken place, that my debit card was, uh, you know, used to be uh, taken out, you know, $100 for groceries. Now it's, you know, $327 for groceries. And I'm, I'm kidding a little bit, but you know, you could appreciate that. But, uh, you know, the, 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 the debit card has been, uh, you know, the transaction has gone by this certain amount, and this number is confirming that. Well, in verse number 35 of Romans chapter number 8, the Lord is giving us a confirmation regarding what has taken place for us, and that is his love for you and I. And can I say one of the greatest things about Christianity is love. One of the greatest things about Christianity is love. In our a committed class this morning over in Heritage Hall, uh, we talked about 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It defines what love is according to God, what true love is. You know, we say, I love Dario, or I love this situation, this organization. And truly, you know, if, if I compare that to my wife, I, I, would, I couldn't say I love Dario like I love my wife, because that's not true. I love Dario, but I truly love like Dario in, 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 that, in that relationship because I truly love my wife. I would sacrifice for my wife, you see. And so uh, God says, I want you to love like I love you. And God's love is perfect. It's unconditional. It's unchanging. It's constant. It's pure. It's not with a side of motive on it. God loves us 
the Bible says, even though we were sinners, even though we did wrong against him, God still loves us. And uh, we have been told of God's love. The children sung for us a while ago, Jesus loves me, this I know. You say, well, that, isn't that kind of an old song? It is, but I, may the Lord help us to, to get a hold of these meanings. And we'll see more about that tonight. But if, you will, if, you will, if, we, if it will sink in our heart and mind that God loves us unconditionally, it will really change our Christian lives. It really will give you the mode of the Christian life. Nobody will have to encourage you and challenge you to come to church or tell others about Christ or give or whatever it may be. We will be motivated by the love of Christ and the fact, not that I love him, but he loves you and I. And we've been told by God's love through the Bible. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. Okay, so we're told that God loves us. And then we're shown that God loves God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So we're shown God's love to us through Calvary and what Jesus has done for us. And then daily we should, as a church, we should experience God's love through one another. Right? We're told of God's love for us. God said, I love you. Even though you were a sinner, God says, I'm going to show you I love you by dying for your sins. But then we're to experience God's love one with another uh, because Jesus said this in John 15, 12. This is my commandment. God didn't say, I'm giving you an option to love one another. Jesus didn't say, this is a good suggestion. Jesus said, this is a commandment that I'm giving you that you love one another, but it doesn't stop there. He says, as I have loved you. Dear sir, we are to love our wives. The Bible says very clearly in the New Testament, husbands love your wives. Can I get an amen from a husband? If you want a, if you want a, if you want a good meal tonight, husbands, you better say amen, all right? And uh, if you want a box of chocolates, you better say amen. Uh, ladies, we are to love our husbands. Ladies, can I get an Amen. Thank you. We're to love our husbands. We're to love one another. A hey, church, are we are to love the person on the other, in the other section? Amen. We're to love others. We're to love our children. Children, you're to love your parents. Teenagers, you're to love your parents. You say, well, they just don't understand everything. They don't understand me, but they love you, and you should love them. We should love one another, but it doesn't stop there. Love others as God has loved us. That takes it to a whole different level. That means I'm to love others, no matter who it is, even though it may be somebody who despises me. I'm to love them just like God has showed me his love for me. Sacrificial love, unconditional love. And so we are told of God's love. We're shown God's love. We are to experience God's love. And, and I hope that you have experienced someone loving you in life. I think some people go through life and my heart goes out to them because... I feel like they do not get shown love very much. And that makes God's love all so much so more and more precious to them. Because when you realize that God loves you, and that doesn't end, that doesn't stop, it doesn't fluctuate, it is constant, it is consistent, regardless of where you go, what you think, what you say, regardless of where you are, who you are, God loves you just as much as he loves the greatest Christian in this world, it'll change your life. And this morning, again, in Romans 8, 35, through verses number 39, we see God's love, and we're confirmed of that. And we're going to be looking at that this morning. Ladies are going to sing for us, but let's pray. And after we pray, they'll sing, and then we'll get into the message this morning. Father, we love you. Thank you so much for the hope that you've given us through Scripture. We've got something to be excited about. We don't, we don't have just, just something only that gets us by, just gets us through. We have something, if we'll get a hold of this word that you've given to us, we've got something not only just to sustain us, we've got something to be excited about. We've got something to be happy about. We've got hope. We've got joy. We've got peace. If we'll just tap into what you've given us and what you've provided for us. Father, we thank you for salvation. Father, Many of us would not even be here in this room assembled together if it wasn't for your grace and love for us and dying for us at Calvary. And Father, I pray that if there's someone in this building that does not know the love of Christ, that they would experience that this morning through accepting you as their Savior. They would realize that you love them so much that you died for them. And Father, help us that are believers, that have accepted Christ. Father, help us to 
uh, experience that love for other people. Help us to be that funnel that you can use to, to, to love others through. And Father, instead of showing hatred and disdain and criticism for everybody that we meet, help us to love others as you've loved us. And I pray that you'd help that to be a dominant characteristic in our lives, not just in Valentine's weekend, not just Valentine's Day, but Father, through our lives daily because we're a child of God. We represent you. Help us with that. And I pray that you'd use me as I preach this morning. Uh, give me exactly what you'd have me to say, please. We love you. And bless these ladies as I sing, please, in Jesus' name. Amen. Face to face with Christ my Savior. Face to face, what we Appreciate that. I want you to notice three things in our, in our text this morning about uh, God's love being confirmed to us. Number one, if you're taking notes this morning, I want you to notice back in verse number 35 and verse 36, and I want us to notice the confusion that we may have about God's love. The confusion that we may have about God's love. So hear the words carefully. The confusion that we may have about God's love. Some of you are thinking, well, Pastor, I, I'm not confused. I know God loves me. Well, listen carefully to the words of what is written here in verse number 35, the Word of God. By, the Bible says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As is it written, for thy sake we are killed 
all the day long, we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. So as a result of problems in life, and can I just ask you this morning uh, to raise your hand if you have ever dealt with a problem so far in 2022, anybody? I'm, I, I want to raise my hand first. I want to raise both of mine, you know, hey, listen, yeah. You know, frustrations. But look at our text, verse 35. He names some things that really we deal with. Tribulation, that's not referring to the uh, that's not referring to the great tribulation. We know that's coming, right? I was so grateful. I appreciate our Wednesday night kids program. I'm going to put a little commercial in here for a second. I appreciate our Wednesday night kids program, our team program on Wednesday night. It is phenomenal. My, 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 my nine-year-old, uh, we were doing our family devotions at night the other night, and uh, my nine-year-old was asking me uh, in talking about the rapture of the church and the tribulation. I thought, wow, I was impressed. I hadn't talked to her about that recently, and I was just blown away, and I said, where did you hear about that? Because she goes to a Christian school, and she said, we talked about it during our Wednesday night Bible study, and I, I cr- appreciate that. On Sunday school, we have, you know, the regular Bible studies, you know, uh, you know, Paul and Silas, and, you know, Joan and the whale, and, you know, and all the different Bible stories, and then children's church, they have something different, but Wednesday nights is a really in-debt Bible doctrine about why we believe what we believe and why we believe it. And I think our kids need to know that. Amen? And uh, I, I, was, I, I appreciate so much our Wednesday night youth program. We had a young lady, Miss Patricia, was witnessing to uh, Kennedy uh, just the other week. She trusted Christ as her personal Savior. All of that stemming from uh, the Wednesday night program. And I thank God for that. But uh, I want to say that we have... I don't know where all of that came from, but we, the tribulation, it's not referring to the tribulation, the great tribulation that we know of in the last book of the Bible, book of Revelation. That is coming, okay? And I thank the Lord if you are saved, if we are saved, we're not going through that, amen? We're going to experience the rapture of the church where Jesus comes back in the clouds. He calls us up to be with him and we're forever with the Lord. That's what the Bible teaches us. We're not going to have to go through the wrath of God. God, the wrath of God is, the tribulation is the wrath of God being poured out upon mankind because they have rejected his son Jesus Christ. And if you've accepted Christ, you don't have to go through that. And so I'm grateful for that. But that's not what that's talking about. Tribulation, can I use this word, turbulence? Anybody experience any turbulence in your life, in your mind, maybe physically or emotionally? You, we experience turbulence. We experience distress. Anybody been stressed? I hear the word stressed out so often. We're stressed to the max and we don't know where to do and where to turn and so forth. Persecution. You know, I believe that Christians today, somebody's got to stand up for what's right. But when you stand up for what's right, I think now more than ever, uh, people are, are a little bit more timid as children of God to stand up for what's right. Because now when you stand up for the word of God... When it goes against the grain of society, it's a little harder to stand, and you may not want to stand as tall. You know, when society, you know, 70, 50, 60 years ago, 70 years ago, when society in America as a whole were trying to, for more than today, was trying to do what's right, it's easy to stand up for what is right. But today, when you are going against stream, when you're going upstream and when you're fighting against culture and trends of society that are ungodly and unbiblical, it's a little harder to stand, isn't it? But may God help us to stand. Darker the night, in other words, worse the situation, brighter the light. We're to be a light in this dark world to shine for Jesus Christ. And may the Lord help us even in, when, when culture is persecuting Christians. And I believe that we're going to see that not improving for the child of God but I believe that the Bible says it's, things are going to get worse and worse. And it's going to get worse for the Christian. It's going to get harder to stand. And so may the Lord help us to have that boldness to stand for what we believe in, according to the word of God, and stand with boldness of, for what is right. But persecution, and I believe some people are already being mocked and made fun of for doing what is right. And it is harder to stand. So we face tribulation or turbulence. Emotionally, mentally, we face distress, we face persecution, just like in Bible times. And can I say that sometimes, if you're not careful, what will happen, by the way, the, the devil has his target on this church, I promise you that. He doesn't like the fact that we're, start, we're having to start a new wiggle worm ministry. 
He doesn't like the fact that there are, were five groups going out Wednesday night outreaching our area, trying to reach Clemens and Winston-Salem and, and Louisville with the gospel of Jesus Christ. He doesn't care for that, friend. So keep your eyes open, amen? And so pray, keep on the armor of God in Ephesians chapter number 6. And let's, let's get in and be serious about this thing and be careful because the devil's going to fight your family, he's going to fight your marriage, he's going to fight your church because he doesn't love what we're doing for the Lord, okay? And so the devil, if you will, can really uh, get you confused. And by the way, he is the author of confusion. And what the devil will do is he'll try to get you to think when distress is in your life, when you're stressed out, you're going through persecution, you're having problems, you're having difficulties, turbulence is in your life. If you're not careful, you'll have this thought. If God really loves me and cares for me, why is he allowing this to go through my life? If you're not careful, the devil slipped that in your mind, that will cross your mind. If I am trying, and by the way, time out, doesn't it seem that the more you try to do for God, the harder the problems are, the, the, the hotter the battle gets? Doesn't it seem that the more you're trying to be faithful to God, the harder it gets? It seems like every time I ask somebody to, to serve in this ministry or will you be a deacon or will you, will you help us with this because they're faithful and they're excited about the things of God. Hey, will you help us do that? It seems like the devil just pounces all over them. It's frustrating. I think, I, I, I'm thinking, well, maybe I shouldn't ask anybody else to do anything because I don't want the devil to, you know, bang the, you know, just because they go through deaths and their family, they go through this and this and this. You say, pastor, is it worth it? Yeah, I think so. At the judgment seat of Christ, I think so. But it, it's hard. It's, it's, it's rough and, and living for the Lord. And we face this, and sometimes if you're not careful, you'll have this idea. Why do godly people suffer? Don't you think that went through Job's mind? Why am I suffering? I'm trying to do what's right in the sight of God. It's all throughout the word of God. Anytime that you're trying to do right, you're going to face trials. You're going to face persecutions. You're going to face uh, 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 troubles and trials. And, and the truth of the matter is, if you're not careful, you'll have this confusion in your mind. If God really loved me, if God really cares for me, why would he allow this? Well, maybe just two things really quickly. Maybe to conform us to Christ. You know, Jesus, let me just read you some prophecy about his life. Isaiah 53 3 says this. He, that is Jesus, is despised. Hold it. You're talk, we're talking about the king of kings. We're talking about the Lord of lords. Yes, he didn't come the first time to be exalted as king. He came the first time to die on the cross for our sins. And during those 33 and a half years that he lived, he was despised, friend. His own people, the Jewish people, cast him out. His own people took him to the Roman government to have him crucified. His own people rejected him. His own people did not believe him, who he was. He is despised and rejected of men. A man, this is about Jesus. It characterizes Jesus, a man of sorrows. You say, not my Jesus, not my Savior who loves me. Yes, he went through that for you and your sins and mine. Acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. So Jesus went through all of this grief, he was a man of sorrows, a man of grief, and we are to be conformed to Christ, are we not? We're to be, that's what a Christian means. When you say, yeah, I'm a Christian, it means I am trying to be like Christ. The term came as people in the city of Antioch, and the, the early church was trying to be like Christ, and they made fun of them. Actually, they were mocking them and calling them little Christians because they were trying to be like Christ so much. And now we turn that frame thing around and we use it so carelessly now. But Christians, if we're going to be like Christ, then we're going to have to conform to Christ. And that means we're going to go through difficulties. And can I say, maybe we're going through the, uh, we're going somewhere with this message, so hang on. Maybe we're going through the turbulence and the distress and the persecution to conform us to Christ. Maybe we're going through turbulence to get closer to Christ. You know what I found out in my life? It is not when everything is going perfect and when the finances are above, everything is just flowing perfectly, then everybody's happy. Our three children are just uh, getting along and everything, which is, 
you know, we haven't experienced that yet, but hopefully one day. And uh, when everybody's in harmony and, you know, everything is just wonderful, everything's going great, it's those times, it's not those times when I'm generally on my knees and saying, Oh God, I don't know what else to do. Lord, I need you. Lord, I can't do this. It's not during the good times that I'm doing that. Normally, it's during the frustrating times. Normally, it's during the turbulence of life. Normally, it's during the distress that I'm calling out to God and saying, God, if you don't help me, I don't know what I'm going to do. Lord, I need you today. Lord, I need your wisdom for this. Lord, I need your grace for this. Lord, I need your help for this because I can't do this. and I want to be a help to them, but I can't do this on my own. It's during the hard times, the trials of life that we get closer to Christ not the triumphs of life. It is the trials of life that bring us closer to Christ more than the triumphs of Christ, triumphs of life. And so maybe we sometimes go through difficulties to be conformed to Christ and to be brought closer to Christ. Now, hold the thought, thought, number one, the confusion. When distress, turbulence, does God really love me? Look in verse number 37. I'm glad you asked because here's the answer. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So the writer here is Paul. He's being inspired. He's being told exactly what to write by God. And he's saying, what's going to separate us from the love of God? So all of these problems and turbulence, absolutely not, he says in verse number 37. He says, in all of these things, we are more than conquerors. I'm glad that we can be a conqueror through the love of Christ. Amen? Listen, friend, you can't overcome. Don't, we, we, may the Lord help us as children of God, children of the King, children of the Creator of this universe, the God who can work miracles, the God who has all power. May the Lord help us to sit on the couch and have this mindset, I cannot do anything. I am helpless. Have pity on me. May the Lord help us to realize that we are conquerors through the Lord Jesus Christ. You can overcome. You can make it through with God's help. It's not the end. There is hope. Amen? You say, America's not looking too good. I know, but my hope is not in my country. My hope is in my God. Amen? Listen, I want my country to go to do just as well. I want the gas prices to be 39 cents just like you do. My wife texts me, and she was, I know why she texts me. She, she was thinking to myself, she was thinking to herself, Josh is not going to understand why I spent so much money in the gas in the van. She didn't realize that my truck holds more gas than her van. And, you know, and, and, you know, and it's frustrating, and I know, and I'm not trying to kill the service today, but the truth of the matter is it is frustrating through life. But listen, I want things to go good just as you, much as you do. But listen, if your hope is in the government, if your hope is in your money and your stocks, listen, friend, get your hope in the Lord. Transfer that hope over. I'm not saying don't have, don't try to work and, and, and produce something better and, and vote. I'm not saying let's not do all that and give up our country. I'm not saying that. But I'm simply saying where you're, you're, you're standing, where your hope is in, may it be in the Lord because we become conquerors through the Lord and his love. Listen, through Christ, we're able to conquer death. I don't want to die. I say this about every service, but I'll say it again. I eat as much popcorn and pizza and hot dogs that I possibly can to live as long as I can. I'm joking, of course, because I don't want to die. Nobody wants to die. But listen, I, I think about this. You know, am I afraid to die? If I was in a car accident, would, if I died, would I be afraid to die? And the truth of the matter is, you know, I, I, I couldn't, I'd lie if I said I was afraid to die because I'm not. Now, suicide is not the answer, and, and I hope you never think about that because that's, that hurts more people than it hurts you, right? It's going to hurt so many more people. That's not the answer. Don't ever think about that. You call me if you need help with that or call somebody in our church that loves you and or can help you with that. But listen, friend, uh, the truth of the matter is I'm not afraid that when my time comes, let me put it that way, to die because I know where I'm going to be with the Lord. Why? Because I have conquered through Christ death. We have conquered hell. Conquered, you can conquer addictions through Christ. I don't know what you're going through, what you're struggling with, but you can conquer those addictions through Christ. We are overcomers. We can conquer those problems of distress and persecution. You can, we can conquer those. Now, I want you to notice that conquering, I want you to notice two things real quick about conquering. 
notice the first thing. Conquering comes during the controversy. Conquering, overcoming you, the stress, the difficulties, the turbulence, doesn't come after the turbulence is over. Or it wouldn't be conquering it. Right? We, we, do, not, we do not conquer unless we're in the battle. We do not have peace unless we are perplexed. We do not have wisdom unless we have the problem. Right? And so, look at verse number 37 quickly. Everybody, real quick this morning, if you're still awake and with me, say amen. amen. Verse 37, nay, what is the next word, church? In. He said, verse 36, verse 35 and verse 36 says, wait a minute. Are we being separated from the love of God because of problems? He says, verse 37, nay, no. We are conquerors. We are conquerors in all these things. What things? The, the tribulation, the problems. We become conquerors in or during the controversy. Notice the next thing. Conquering comes not only during the controversy, but conquering comes directly through Christ. Some people say, I want to wait till I get better to get saved. Or I'm going to get in church after I get these things worked out. You're going the opposite direction God wants you to. God says, get to the cross. God says, go to Jesus. Get it right. God will take care of you from the inside out. We try to work from the outside in. God says, I'm working from the inside out. God says, you run to the cross. Notice verse 37. Nay, in... In other words, during the problems, during the tribulation, the turbulence, during the stress, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. What does it say? Through him that loved us. Listen, friend, we cannot conquer anything apart from Christ. We cannot conquer anything apart from Christ. Paul didn't say we are conquerors, period. He said we are conquerors through Christ. Can I say that through Christ and his salvation, as we've already mentioned, we can conquer death? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 54, listen carefully what it says. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Verse 55 says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, it's through salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ, not my own works, that I can conquer death and hell. I'm not going to hell. I have conquered that. You say, how'd you do that? Through Christ. Because he died for me. It's not what I've done. It's not my wisdom, my intelligence. It's not in my efforts. It's not in my works. It's not that I'm a good boy. It's not that I am a, a, am a good person. It's the fact that Jesus shed his blood for me 2,000 years ago in a place called Calvary. And I trusted him, the fact that he died for me, and I asked him to come into my heart, forgive me for being a sinner, and come into my heart and save me. And the moment that I did that, God says, now you have eternal life, and now you have conquered death and hell. You see, the very moment that Josh Bowles dies, whenever that will be, I hope it's 127, when Josh Bowles dies, the very last breath that I take here will be my first breath next in heaven. I've conquered death through Christ. And if you're here this morning, you've never been saved, you need to trust Christ as your Savior. Because the only way that you're going to escape and conquer death and hell is through the cross, is through the Lord Jesus Christ, by accepting him as your Savior and your only way to go to heaven. Notice this, through Christ and his strength, we are able to conquer the difficulties. Not only through Christ we're able to conquer death, but through Christ we're able to conquer the difficulties in life. I'm going to give you this, I've got to hurry, but I want to mention this. Paul, he's writing this. Paul had a problem just like you did. He called it a thorn in the flesh. We don't know exactly what it was, but he had something in his life. He said, Lord, I want it out of my life. And he asked him three times that same thing. Lord, please remove this, at this, 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 this problem out of my life. Get it out, Lord, please. Three times. And God says, Paul, I'm not going to do that. But he did say this, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my grace 
is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. So God says, Paul, you've got your difficulty, and I'm not going to remove the difficulty because I'm going to use it in your life for something. But Paul, I am going to give you the strength or the grace through that difficulty. And Paul rejoiced in the grace that God had given him. And some of us, we have something in our life perhaps, and you say, Lord, I want this gone. Lord, I want this out. And God says, no, I want it there because I have a purpose. But God says, I will give you the strength to go on and to have victory in your life. And so may the Lord help us to realize that in our, in our, in our, in, uh, we, we can conquer not only through death, through salvation in Christ, but also through Christ and his strength, his grace, we can conquer those difficulties. That difficulty may never be taken out of your life, but God can get, allow you to conquer that by his strength, you see. It'll help you. Now, number three, and we're done. The confidence we have in God's love. Not only the confusion, pastor... If God loves me, why am I going through so much stress, so much problems, so much, why am I being mocked, and why am I going through all this turbulence? Well, maybe to conform you to Christ, maybe to draw you closer to Him, may we inventory our lives. And then secondly, we can conquer, oh, oh, so many things, not only death and hell, but also the problems, the struggles, but it's through Christ that we conquer that, not in our own ability but number three, the confidence. Notice what he says in verse number 38 again. For I am persuaded. Now again, he's, he's speaking, God is speaking through him here. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. In other words, God is not going to quit taking care of you. God is not going to quit loving you. God is not going to quit blessing you. He's going to keep on going. And we can have confidence in that. Listen, we can have confidence in God's love for us through the possibilities of life. Whether it's death or life, whether you live this life to a, a, a wonderful old age or whether you die uh, prematurely, whatever it may be, God's love will never fail you. I like especially in verse 38 when it says, nor things present, nor things to come. I don't know what you're dealing with presently, and I don't know what's in our lives to come. Nobody can see the future, but I do know this. I am persuaded of this, as Paul said, that whatever comes and whatever is, God will always be there for you. God's love is unchanging, and God has a purpose, and God has a plan. May the Lord help us just to seek him with the strength to continue on. We have confidence in God's love through the possibilities of life. We have confidence in God's love through the powers of life. Look in verse 38, he says, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers. That can mean a whole lot of things. It can mean the powers of Satan. It can mean the powers of government, whatever it may be. I don't know what those powers all could, could possibly consist of, but God's love through all of the problems of life never fluctuate. And lastly, we can have confidence of God's love through the personalities of life. Verse 38, or excuse me, verse 39 says, neither nor height nor depth nor any other creature. You know, I like what Jesus, he used the illustration. He says, when you get saved, it's like you're in the, you, you're in the palm of my hand and no one can pluck you out of my hand. When you get saved, you're there forever. You're in Christ. No one can pluck you out of Jesus' hand. I'm grateful for that. No one can get you uh, keep God from loving you and for being gracious to you and helping you in time of need. Nobody can prevent that. Not even the powers of hell. No personality. You say you don't understand the influence of so-and-so. Nobody, nobody is greater than God. And nothing's going to separate you from the love of God. Now, a lot of times in our lives, if you allow your heart or my heart, if we allow our heart to get cold, and different away from God. That doesn't mean we're not saved anymore, but it means that when my heart gets away from God, I'm in trouble because I have forgotten who my refuge is. I have forgotten who my go-to is. And if you get your heart cold and indifferent away from God, you don't have a desire for God's word. You don't have a desire to pray. You don't have a desire for go to church. We're kind of like that prodigal son that gets away from the father. And can I say this? God is still wanting you to come back to him. 
But if you're not careful, you'll get that cold in a different heart and you'll be going to other sources for your strength and overcoming and your conquering because of your problems. Come here for a minute. Problems don't go away. Until you get to heaven, if you're saved, until you get to heaven, we're going to deal with problems and complications and stress and turbulence. But what you do with those when they come is going to make the difference in your life, whether you experience the victory or whether we get further and further away from God. And a lot of people can, are children of God, and they're, just, they're overwhelmed. I don't know what to do. And instead of running to church, and instead of running to God's Word, and instead of running to prayer, they're running to Facebook and running to this counselor. And I'm not saying counselors are wrong. Counselors are good. It's biblical. But go to a spiritual counselor who's going to give you the Word of God. And they're running here. I'm not criticizing you if you're doing that. I'm saying run to the cross. That is how you're going to conquer. That is how you're going to overcome. It is through Jesus. Not in your ability, not in my ability, not in somebody else's ability, but God's ability. I wonder if you're here this morning and you've never trusted Christ. You'll never be able to overcome if you don't trust Christ as your personal Savior. And I wonder if you're here this morning and you are a child of God and you have some difficulties, you have some turbulence going on like everybody in this room. Don't think that you're, that you're different than anybody else. But if you have turbulence in your life, I wonder if you'd run to the altar and say, Lord, I've been trying to seek advice from everybody else except you. Lord, I need to conquer this. And Lord, I know that you're all powerful and I know, Lord, you can give me what I need to conquer and overcome this because you love me. And you have the best interest in, in mind for me. And Lord, I'm running to you. And I'm going to get plugged into you. Whatever it takes, I'm just going to get plugged into you. I wonder if you do that this morning. I wonder if you do that. With heads bowed and eyes are closed, let's stand together. Musicians are coming. We're standing quietly to our feet. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. I wonder if you'd raise your hand this morning and say, Pastor, I know for sure if I died today, I'd go to heaven. I, I don't have fear. I don't want to die, but I have no fear because I know I've trusted Christ as my Savior. I know I'm a child of God. Would you lift up your hand this morning and say, Pastor, I know for sure. How about it? Thank you. You can put those hands down. I wonder if you're here this morning. You say, Pastor, I'll be honest with you. As our musicians begin playing, Pastor, I realize in my heart right now, I know I'm not saved. I've never placed my faith in Christ, and I know I need to do that. I know the punishment of death and eternity in hell. I know that. And I don't want to, I want to be conqueror of that. Well, it's through Christ. I'm not going to come to you. I'm not going to call your name out. I would not embarrass you for nothing in this world. I like to put myself in your shoes. But if you're here this morning, you have a need. And you've never trusted Christ. You'd like for me to pray for you in my own private time with the Lord. Would you raise your hand and hold it there for just a second? Anybody like that this morning? Raise it up and hold it there for just a second. Anybody like that? Pray for me, Pastor. I need to get saved. How about this morning? If you're a child of God, and you say, Pastor, I've got some turbulence in my life, and, and I need to conquer that. I need to overcome that. Would you pray for me? Would you raise your hand this morning? How about it? I see hands all, all throughout the building. Why don't you run to the altar this morning? Why don't you get some help today? Well, the Holly's going to sing for us as he's singing. Why don't you come? The altar's open. How about it? Would you come right now? Heads bowed, eyes are closed. How about it? Folks are coming. How about it? Dad, mom, why don't you come to the altar? Get some help. How about it? Child of God, how about it? Would you come? If you're not saved, would you come and trust Christ? Without him, I would. Like a ship without a sail, Jesus, oh Jesus, do you know him today? Please don't turn.
with heads bowed eyes are closed. People are using the altar, praying, getting some help. How about Without mom, dad, teenager, grandparent, I'd be enslaved without him life would be hopeless but with Jesus thank God I'm saved Jesus oh Jesus Verse together. The words are up here. Let's look up here. Let's sing it out together as a church. Without him, sing it out now. I could do nothing. Think about the words. Without him, I surely fail. Think about it. Without him, I would be drifting like a sheep without a sail. Lift it up on the chorus. Sing it with all your heart. Beat it today. morning and I pray that you'd help all of us to realize we can overcome we can be conquerors through your love father you have our best interest in mind your love and your blessing for us it doesn't waver doesn't father your love for us doesn't change from day to day to day I'm grateful for that and father I pray that you'd help us to run to you help us not to be confused that you love us during times of hardship Father, help us to cling to the cross, to run to you, to get help, to find confidence in the power of God. Father, we love you. Bless the remaining part of the service, the service tonight. Please, in Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. We're going to have our announcements, and then we'll be dismissed this morning. And so uh, keep the announcements in mind, if you will. Miss Holly. And uh, Daniel, they're already gone, aren't they? Okay, for they're going to do the tickets. I'll mention that in just a second. The video announcements will be short. Listen very carefully this morning. Thank you for joining us today here at Temple Baptist Church. We would like to remind you of a few upcoming events. The Ladies Missionary Prayer Fellowship Ministry will be having their monthly meeting this Tuesday, February 15th at 7 p.m. Join us in the Activity Center as we draw new heart sisters and enjoy a great time of fellowship encouragement with the ladies of our church. Our Ladies Missionary Prayer Fellowship is having a craft and bake sale today in the Activity Center. Drop by before or after each service today for a sweet treat or special gift that will help enable this ministry of our church be a blessing to others. Our men's skeet shoot has been rescheduled to Saturday, February 26th. We are looking forward to this great time of fun and fellowship with the men of our church. If you would like to be a part, please see the sign-up sheet today located in the entryway. Our Couples Refresher will be this Saturday evening, February 19th at 6 p.m. 
We are looking forward to this fun and helpful event in our Heritage Hall that is intended to strengthen each couple's relationship. The cost is $20 per couple and payments can be made after either service today in the Activity Center. We would like to have an updated list of all the birthdays and anniversaries of our church family so that we can celebrate these special dates with you. Whether you are a long-term member or brand new to our church, we would like to ask everyone to list these special dates in the calendar on the table near the media desk no later than today. Once again, thank you for joining us this morning. We would like to invite each family to be with us again at 6 o'clock p.m. for our evening service. We are looking forward to special singing as well as a helpful message from God's Word. Amen. All right, let's all stand together once again. And as you're standing, I want to go over this real quickly with you. Don't forget about signing up for the men's skeet shoot, fellas, if you are interested in that. And uh, I think we've got 16 so far. I think that's one of the largest numbers we've had for that. That's wonderful. And so keep that in mind, if you will. If you cannot go, we need you to mark your name out. Uh, but if you can, leave it on there. Sign up if you'd like to. And then also, this is very important, you need to pick up your tickets today. And they look like this. They're very beautiful tickets. Uh, they say there's a misprint on there. It says 5 o'clock. It is not 5 o'clock. It is 6 o'clock, okay? You say, why didn't you change that? Well, if you mistake that, you're going to be early, not late, okay? And so, uh, but uh, these are one ticket. Each one will have a ticket. You'll need to bring this. These have numbers on them. You'll need to bring these to the Couples Refresher this coming Saturday in Heritage Hall at 6 o'clock. But you need to pay for your ticket today, $20 per couple. If you don't have the money, you see me, and we'll get you taken care of, okay? But we want you to come, and that sign-up sheet already has been taken up. But uh, keep that in mind, if you will, please. Then, um, also, uh, if you're going to be here, if you know you're going to be here tonight, um, that would be helpful to go ahead and do that after church tonight. And so that if you know that you're not going to, for those that know they're not going to be able to be here tonight, uh, they can go ahead and do that this morning. So it's right across the, the breezeway there in the activity center. Keep that in mind, if you will. Then the Ladies Missionary Prayer Fellowship. I know they got some great stuff over there and uh, to eat, snack on, and so forth. So keep that in mind, if you will. And it's good for your dieting, those that are continuing that, okay? And I'm joking, of course. But keep that in mind, if you will, okay? And then uh, we'll have some other announcements coming up uh, tonight. Nursery, me nursery ministry meeting uh, tonight after the service. Uh, so don't forget about that, okay? Other things coming up soon. All right, God bless you. Turn around to the person behind you, beside you, and thank them for coming. You're dismissed. God bless you.